The cabled trellis shawl is a super cozy DK or worsted weight pattern, so it's really thick and quick to knit for a, a nice winter weight shawl. So I used two colors for this cabled trellis shawl, a main color, a Westwell bicycle, and some self-striping marled colors for the contrast colors. So you could decide to use just one main color and one contrast color in the recommended yardage, but I split up my contrast color into three different shades. So that made it really fun to melt and mix the stripes together. And I just went from one contrast color to the next, but you get a little bit more tonality if you're using different contrast colors. But the pattern's written for two yarns, a main color and a contrast color. In this video, we're gonna learn all the techniques to knit this shawl. So we're gonna learn the I-cord tab cast on at the top center. We're gonna learn how to cable without a cable needle for all those slip stitch cable stripes. And we're gonna learn that Pico hem to finish your shawl with that reversible folded thick finish. So if you know how to do some of these techniques already, you can skip ahead in this video. I put timestamps down below. So you could skip ahead to the cables or skip ahead to the border and just cast on and choose your colors and a really cozy winter shawl. So let's dive into these techniques and get started. Here's the beginning of the cabled trellis shawl. We're gonna cast on right here with the contrast color. So in this sample, the garter ridges are the contrast color. So if you're working with just one contrast color throughout the entire project, that's totally fine. You're gonna need about 435 yards of your contrast color, and you're gonna need about 500 yards or 457 meters of your main color, which is two skeins of Westwell Tandem. So this was the orange main color for this sample, and that main color is the dominant color throughout the shawl. What you see in the border and all of those cabled trellis motifs. So when you begin your shawl, we're gonna start with the contrast color and cast on three stitches using that contrast color. You can use any cast on method that you like. I'm going to work a long tail cast on. Get three stitches on your needle any way that you like, and then knit those three stitches. One, two, three and slip those three stitches onto left needle. One, two, three. We're going to repeat that twice more. Knit three, and then slip those three stitches onto the left needle. Once more, knit three, and slip those three. We're making a little I-cord tab. This is called the I-cord tab cast on. After you repeated that twice more, knit three, pick up and knit three stitches along the I-cord edge. So along this little I-cord edge, we need to get three stitches. I'm gonna dive into both legs of an I-cord stitch and pull it through three times. Here's the second time. And the third time, dive in, wrap the yarn around and pull it through. You should have six stitches. Turn to work the wrong side. Next row, wrong side. Pick up and knit three stitches along the I-cord cast on edge, starting with the stitch closest to the left needle tip. Okay, what does that mean? We're gonna get three stitches along this I-cord edge, starting right here, starting really close to that working tail of yarn. So pick up a strand, it doesn't really matter which one. Knit it, we need two more strands. Here's a strand of yarn. One more, just dive in. So this one works, something here works. There's a lot of strands of yarn, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have three stitches picked up and knit along that cast on edge, it should look something like this. Continue to purl three. One, two, three. And then slip three with yarn in front. One, two, three. With the yarn hanging in front. And we're always gonna do that at the end of every row. Slip the last three, making sure that the yarn is in front 
before you slip. Section one, garter stitch. We're gonna continue with this beautiful contrast color, working row one, right side, knit three, make one. I'm gonna show you holding the yarn in my right hand. For the make one, we're gonna do the backwards loop cast on, twisting the yarn and popping it onto the needle, having that little make one twist. Once more, twist the yarn and place it onto the needle. And you wanna see that little interlocked loop. If you hold the yarn in your left hand, I do this for a make one. Knit one, make one three times. Knit one, make one, knit one, make one, knit one, and here's how you do it with your right hand. Twist and pop it onto the needle. So that was three times, and now slip three with yarn in front. Always make sure the yarn is in front before you slip those last three stitches. Once you finish row one, we're gonna work a right side and wrong side. I'm gonna place a big marker just to make sure I don't forget which is my right side and my wrong side. So this big marker is gonna help me remember this was row one, this was the right side. So now we're gonna work row two, wrong side, knit 10, knit all of those stitches in beautiful garter stitch. And once you knit 10, you should be at the last three stitches to slip three with yarn in front. Row three, right side, Knit the first three stitches. One, two, three. Knit front back seven times. Knit into the front and back of the stitch seven times. Here's the second stitch. Number three, front and back. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, we're going to knit front, back, front, and into the back, front, and back. So seven total times that knit front, back. And once you do that seven times, you should be at the last three stitches to slip three with the yarn in front. You should have 20 total stitches. Row four, wrong side, knit 17, and slip three with yarn in front. That's a really easy row. And after that, it becomes really easy with rows five and six, and then you'll repeat those uh, rows. So continue to follow the written instructions very closely. And we're going to end up doing a knit three, and we'll be, be doing a knit front back at the beginning of our row for rows five and six. So those were all the techniques for this section one. And at the, after you finish repeating rows five and six, you should have 24 stitches. So keep on repeating those rows to get some beautiful garter stitch. I have 24 total stitches. As you're repeating rows five and six, if you lose track of your rows and forget where you are, just make sure you have 24 stitches. So do a count. And if you only have 23 or 25, just sneak in an extra increase or decrease, okay? You can always just fudge it in this shawl. So if you don't have the right stitch count, it's usually because you missed an increase at the edge. So just sneak in an extra edge increase. And I know I'm on the right side because of my handy marker that I placed. Row nine, right side, knit three, and knit front back 18 times. So we're gonna knit front back into every stitch 18 times until you reach the last three stitches. So at the end of row nine, right side, we're going to have 42 total stitches. And then continue to follow the instructions. After rows nine and 10, we're gonna repeat rows five and six, doing that easy garter stitch. So at the end of this section, you should have 56 total stitches. So keep on following those garter stitch rows until you have 56 stitches at the end of this section.
After you finish section one, you should have 56 total stitches. I kept moving my stitch marker around to help me keep track of that right side, so I know I'm ready for the right side again. I have 56 stitches. If you don't have 56, then just sneak in some stitches, okay? If you've missed an increase or something, just get back on track, because for section two, we need 56 stitches for row one, and we're gonna do these cabled columns, these beautiful columns. So row one, we're gonna use the main color. I'm gonna use my solid west wool main color, row one, and keep those colors attached, okay? My contrast, my contrast color is still attached. We're gonna carry those yarns along the edge as we stripe colors. Row one, right side, main color, knit three, knit front back. Knit two, make one to last four stitches. Knit two, make one, using that backwards loop cast on. Knit two, make one. All the way to the last four stitches. Knit two, make one. Knit two, and make one. Twist that yarn and pop it onto the needle. Continue doing that knit two, make one all the way to the last four stitches. Once you reach the last four stitches, you just did a make one, knit one, and slip those last three with yarn in front. You should have 81 total stitches. Row two, wrong side, knit three, Purl front back, purl into the front and into the back of that stitch and then take it off. Let's do that one more time, that purl front back. So after you knit three stitches, purl into the front and into the back of that stitch. Purl front back. Now purl to the last three stitches. Purling all of those main color stitches until you reach the last three stitches of the row. At the end of row two, slip those last three stitches with the yarn in front. Row three, right side, we're going to use the contrast color. Using contrast color, knit three, one, two, three, knit front back, knit two, slip four with yarn in back, knit two, and slip four, one, two, three, four, with the yarn in back. We're gonna do that to the last six stitches, knit two, slip four, knit two, slip four. So the yarn is always in back as you slip. You can slip them off one at a time to slip four, and then knit two, or it's quicker if you just slide them all through at once making sure you just get four slip stitches purl-wise. Knit two, slip four. Keep on doing that until you reach the last six stitches. Once you reach the last six stitches of the row, you just slipped four stitches. Now you knit three, and slip three with yarn in front for the end of row three, right side. Row four, wrong side, knit three, knit front back, knit into the front and back of the stitch, knit two, slip four with yarn in front to last seven stitches. Knit two, slip four, knit two, slip four. I just knit two, and we're gonna slip those same four stitches 
but with the yarn in front. And then we need to knit two. So take that yarn to the back to knit and bring it in the front to slip. Slip four, knit two. Slip four with yarn in front and take that yarn in back to knit. As you're slipping these stitches, you bring the yarn forward to slip those four. When you take the yarn in back to knit, just don't carry the yarn too tight or too loose, okay? I don't really think about it too much. You know, it's gonna float on this wrong side, but not too tight, not too loose. I'll show that for you continental knitters. Slipping those four with yarn in front. And so as I take it to the back, don't pull super tight like that, okay? That's gonna become more difficult to knit later. So just keep it nice and relaxed, not too loose, not too tight. Again, I don't really think about it too much. I just slip four and keep on knitting with my normal tension. But that's what it should look like. Knit two, slip four. Always make sure that yarn is in front on the wrong side so that those columns on the right side, look how smooth those are. They don't have an interruption. Like if you slipped with the yarn in back accidentally, look what happens. You get that little belt. We don't want that. So make sure you always slip with yarn in front on the wrong side. Slip four with yarn in front. Knit two, slip four. All the way to the last seven stitches. Once you reach the last seven stitches, you just slipped four stitches with yarn in front, knit four, slip three with yarn in front. Now we're ready to cable for row five, right side. Use that main color. Whenever you carry the yarns along the edge, just bring the next color up from below like this. And we're just gonna carry each yarn along the edge as we stripe. Row five, right side, using main color, knit three. Knit front back. Knit three. Cable four back, knit two, to last five stitches. Cable four back. We're gonna cable these four stitches using a cable four back. So these two stitches, the first two stitches right here, need to go behind the last two stitches. So I'm gonna cable without a cable needle. I'm gonna slide my right needle through those last two stitches and do this. Take the needle out and then put it back in so that those two stitches cross. So do you see how those first two stitches now went behind those other two? Now they're ready to knit in this crossed formation. So knit those four stitches for the cable four back. Working with four stitches and those first two go behind. Let's keep on doing that. We need to knit two, cable four back. Dive into those last two main color stitches. Take the left needle out. Put it right back in. Pop those first two stitches onto the left needle and knit them all. That's the cross. Let's keep on doing that a couple more times. Knit two. Cable four back. All right, take those first two stitches slide the left needle out and back in so that those first two go behind for that cable two back and knit all four of those stitches knit two we're going to do that to every group of four main color stitches so every time you reach that main color four stitch cluster Slide in, take the left needle out and then back in to crisscross those stitches and knit them all. I love cabling with this method because you don't need a cable needle and once you get used to it, it does go a little bit quicker. 
And don't be scared to slide your needle out because those stitches aren't going to go anywhere. Knit two. Go into those last two stitches. And as soon as you slide the needle out, slide it back in to get that cross. Keep on following row five all the way to the end. And these are all the techniques used for this section. So keep on following rows five, six, seven, eight. Keep on repeating. And we're gonna be combining this beautiful cable technique in combination with some increases later on in this section to help shape the fabric. So keep on following and enjoy those beautiful cabled columns that are gonna look like this on the right side and like this on the wrong side. You see those little floats, not too tight, not too loose. And once you're done with this section, those are all the cabling techniques. So you can keep on cabling for the next cabled trellis section. And as you reach the other cabled section for section three, just make sure you're following the rows very closely and paying attention to your stitch counts as those cabled trellises increase. And that's the magic of this pattern is that as you do the cable technique, occasionally there's gonna be these uh, hidden increases that shape the motifs all the way to the border. But try that cabling without a cable needle technique, following those written rows closely, and enjoy that squishy, cabled, striped fabric. Let's learn how to do that border for a Pico hem. It's gonna be a, re a reversible stockinette stitch hem with these little picots. And to, to set up your border, just follow all the border rows very closely, and you'll be getting something that looks like this. So this same pico hem is used for the spiraling cables triangle and the cabled trellis shawl. So here's a mini spiraling cables triangle example, but it's the same border technique for this cabled trellis shawl that's right here. So both patterns have that same pico hem. So set up your border like this, you're gonna get those yarn over rows and that uh, beautiful stockinette stitch. And uh, to finish, we're gonna do next row right side. I'm gonna show you that instruction that says knit one together with a picked up stitch from the wrong side. So again, you should have something that looks like this with those yarn overs in the middle of that stockinette stitch. And when you fold the border over, look at that. That's what gives you that beautiful hem. So next row, right side. When it says knit one together with a picked up stitch from the wrong side, we're gonna dive down below. And the first time you do that, we're gonna do that by picking up a little I-cord stitch. So I'm gonna, I know that I'm gonna need three I-cord stitches picked up. So this is gonna be my first one, and then my second one, and my third one. So I'm looking, I'm just preparing, and I know I need to get three I-cord stitches eventually. So I'll go here for my first one. So we're gonna pick up and knit that stitch together with the first stitch, and then knit next stitch together with the picked up stitch from the wrong side. So we're gonna do that again. Right there, we'll get another I-cord stitch. And after you do that, you're gonna pass, you're going to pass the first stitch over to bind off one stitch. Now keep on doing that. Knit next stitch together with a picked up stitch from the wrong side and pass the first stitch over. All right, those were all my little I-cord stitches. Now we're gonna keep on doing that. And as you turn to look at the wrong side to pick up the next stitch, let's see, where can we go? Just start by going into that, those, gar those uh, pearl bumps that you see on the wrong side. Knit those together and pass over. And then get the next pearl bump. Knit it together with that next stitch and pass the first one over. So I'm going yeah, right here that first time I see that full main color of those bumps. We're gonna pick that up and knit it and pick up the next bump and knit it together 
with the next live stitch. And don't forget to pass. So there should always be one stitch on your right needle, and that means you're ready to pick up and knit the next purl bump. So that's the technique. And as you go, if it's hard to see which bump to pick up into, it might be easier if you want to go into these contrast color bumps. You could pick up those and knit each one of those together with a live stitch. And just check every now and then. As you are binding off, you could trace your stitch down. So, okay, this is my stitch. I need to get a bump from the wrong side about right here. You can pinch the fabric and look at the wrong side and see where you are. Okay, I need to get something right there. It doesn't have to be too exact, okay? So you could get this bump, or that little contrast bump, or, you know, if it's the next one, that's okay. But more or less, they should line up as you bind off, and that's gonna be the technique. You're gonna get that nice little bind off with the folded pico hem. And as you work that pico hem, I did it with the main color on the right side, and if you have enough main color, you could do it on the wrong side as well, but uh, I used most of my main color. So on this sample, I used the main color for the first rows of the hem, and then on the wrong side of the hem, I used my contrast color. So I had more of my contrast color left over in my project, so I used that on the wrong side so I didn't run out of my main color. But you could even do an entire hem with the contrast color, or a totally new color. So if you feel like you're running out of that main color after you finish the cables in your shawl, before you start that hem, you might want to choose just a totally different color or skip straight ahead to using that contrast color for all of these border rows. Um, so yeah, don't worry if you start to run out, you could just, you know, get creative, stripe your main color with your contrast color, use an extra color. Yeah, use the yarn you have left over to make that border work and it's going to put a finishing touch to that beautiful cabled trellis shawl or the spiraling cables triangle. Once you finish your project, you're going to have a few ends to weave in. So whenever I weave in ends for my projects, I like to just do a simple whip stitch by taking an end and pulling it through a purl bump on the wrong side of the fabric. And I do this about 10 or 12 times. A little whip stitch. You could do a bunch all at the same time too, like this. Dive into those bumps and pull the yarn through. And that's gonna do it for weaving in your ends. And when you cut the yarn, just cut the yarn and snip it with some scissors uh, about right there. You know, not too close, cause then it's gonna come out a little bit, but snip it or just break the yarn too. And that's enough to weave in your ends right there. And I'll do that a couple more times here at the beginning of my cast on corner. So when you're weaving in those ends, just whip stitch them through. And whenever you're weaving in ends at the cast on edge, it's, it's usually a smaller little tab or a smaller corner. So you can go back and forth a couple times. Go towards the end of the row and then turn and go back the other way. And that's enough to keep those ends secure. Really simple, cut that end. And after you weave in your ends, you can soak the shawl in some cool water. So soak it in some cool water and then just squeeze that water out so it becomes not too, too soaking wet, but squeeze all the water out that you can. And I like to roll my shawls up into a towel to dampen the water. And I just lay these shawls flat to dry. So I didn't pin any of my shawls. If, if you just want those smooth edges. So just lay them flat to dry. If you want to exaggerate the shape, when you pin out the shawls, you could pin the wingspan edge of your shawl first. So I place it on a mattress or blocking mats or on a rug and pin the wingspan first, just every now and then, like here, here, place some pins in the fabric. And then if you want to stretch out that border, you could place a pin into every cable cross here at the border of your shawl. And that could exaggerate and make this kind of scalloped border effect. So you could really stretch it out when you block it to get that huge size. But I didn't do that with this shawl. I just soaked it and just lay it out flat, 
just coax the fabric out, stretch it out a little bit to smooth the edges, and that's all there is to it. Just soak the shawl, lay it flat to dry, and enjoy your finished cabled trellis shawl. Well, I hope this little tutorial helped you get started on your cabled trellis shawl. It's uh, not too big of a project, so I'm wearing it wrapped just once around, and it's one of those shawl sizes that's not too big, not too small, so that means it doesn't take too long. So keep going with those stripes. Use those little cable crosses and stripes as motivation to keep going towards the border. And once you finish, I'd love to see your progress and your pictures. So you can share those with hashtag cabled trellis shawl on Instagram or post those projects on Ravelry. And I can't wait to knit the next shawl together with you.